Um, you know, I think people come up and, um, you know, people like to debate us. Some people come up just to hold our feet in the fire and give us a hard time. Some people have legitimate questions. College Republican President Jacob Vandeveer talked with students in the quad about the upcoming election with congressional candidate Art Robinson. And our own Alexander Buck travels behind the scenes at the Student Sustainability Center for a look at the monthly repair fair. And finally, we're going to take a look. And finally, we're going to take a look at the Civil War Blood Drive Challenge and what it means both locally and nationally. We'll have all that and more on tonight's episode of the Beaver News. Good evening and welcome to your Thursday night edition of the Beaver News. I'm Cody Stover. And I'm Joe Hedberg. We're glad you could join us tonight. With the Civil War comes herds of screaming, yelling, arguing fans from across the state, and there will be bloodshed. However, the blood I'm talking about will be shed during the Civil War blood drive put on by the American Red Cross. The blood drive, which takes place every year before the Civil War football game, will be on campus next week, Monday through Thursday from 11 to 4 in the MU Ballroom, and on Friday from 10 to 3 at the Methodist Church on Monroe. U of O also will take part in the Civil War blood drive, and the Red Cross will keep a tally on how many total ducks and beavers donate. They also will allow Oregonians donating in any part of the state to indicate their Civil War affiliation. Therefore, this will be a statewide beavers vs. ducks competition. This year, the Red Cross is in need of more blood than ever. Most of the blood from this year's drive will help out the relief effort on the East Coast in the wake of Hurricane Sandy. We talked with Patrick Wincheski, a volunteer helping to gather pledges for next week's drive. Uh, my name is Patrick Wincheski. I am the president of the Blood Drive Association here at Oregon State. We are grabbing, uh, getting appointments for the Civil War Blood Drive here at Oregon State next week. Um, it is the largest blood drive in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it's a statewide competition versus the Ducks, and we're trying to win this year as they have won the last two. A unit is a pint of blood. Last year we pumped in over a thousand units. I mean, it's a good goal, and with the whole Hurricane Sandy thing going on, um, they need more blood than ever. Blood drive is next week, Monday through Friday. Um, that's the 5th through the 9th. Uh, 11 to 4 in the MU Ballroom, and on Friday it's from 10 to 3 at the First United Methodist Church in Monroe. If, if you were watching last week's football game against the Washington Huskies, you saw a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on Oregon State receiver Marcus Wheaton. He was diagnosed with a concussion and held out of practice for the majority of the week. However, he was back in pads today and running drills with the team. I spoke with him today and he said, quote, I'm not sure if I will start, but I will play, end quote. He also stated that he feels better than he was before. The team is a little banged up with Storm Woods also limited in practice this week, but he practiced in full today as well. The only question on the Beavers have right now is in regards to senior cornerback Jordan Poyer, who has been limited all week and had a minimal day due to a knee injury. Coach Riley said he is a game-time decision. Hurricane Sandy has canceled two lectures at Oregon State. Because the speakers were not able to travel to the West Coast, two planned lectures for Monday have been canceled at Oregon State University. Horticulture Research and Education Programs at Longwood Gardens was scheduled for 4 p.m. in room 4000 in the Agriculture and Life Sciences Building. A presentation by Matt Taylor, research horticulturist with Longwood Gardens, couldn't travel out of Pennsylvania because of the storm. And Deadly Divas, Why Some Muslim Women Kill, with analyst, writer, lecturer, and terrorism expert Farhana Kazi, was previously scheduled for 7 p.m. in room 153 in Winnegar Hall, has also been moved. For more information, you can check out the Oregon State website. With this election coming up, many students are becoming politically active in an attempt to motivate the student body to vote. One such group, the College Republicans, were seen in the quad today discussing important issues that pertain to students. On his own behalf, District 4 Congressional Candidate Art Robinson came by to talk with potential voters. We stopped by to discuss with them. Um, actually, we were just out here for our regular uh, tabling and we've got some uh, drawing tickets. We're getting ready for someone to donate some Civil War tickets, so we're having a little fundraiser for that. And uh, uh, Dr. Robinson just happened to show up, and we're happy to have him. Um, you know, I think people come up and, uh, you know, people like to debate us. Some people come up just to hold our feet in the fire and give us a hard time. Some people have legitimate questions. You know, economy is a big thing going on. Uh, 
you know, we've got a bunch of information about candidates we like to give out. So if people are thirsty for information, they should come here. We've been out here about 10 to 4 every day this week. Yesterday was Halloween, and as expected, many children were out and about trick-or-treating door-to-door. But sisters from Kappa Delta Chi sorority are trick-or-treating for a cause much greater than candy. This past week, members of Kappa Delta Chi have been in the quad trick-or-treating for donations to UNICEF, an international organization focused on improving the lives of children in need. As of today, the sisters have started trick-or-treating for the cause in the Corvallis community. The sorority will conclude its UNICEF ha Halloween philanthropy tomorrow. According to the Oregon State website, Friday, November 9th is the last day for students to withdraw from a course through online services. You have until 11.55 p.m. to withdraw from the class. The 9th is also the last day you can SU a course. For those of you who are new to this process, SUing a course is based on the pass or no pass system. If you decide to SU a course and receive a grade higher than a C-, then you will pass the class with no impact on your GPA. Likewise, if you SU a course and earn a D, you will fail the course, but the class does not affect your GPA. In order to SU a course, you must have approval from your academic advisor to do so. SU forms must be turned into the office of the registrar no later than 5 p.m. on Friday the 9th. This last Monday, members of the Student Sustainability Initiative and members of the campus recycling group Waste Watchers organized their first monthly repair fair. Our own Alexander Buck went out in the field to see what they were up to. In the Student Sustainability Center, many students come over to get things of all shapes and sizes repaired. We asked Repair Fair representative and Waste Watchers Club coordinator, Lindsay Alamo Road, to ask where they got the idea for the career fair. So, um, how we got the idea for the repair fair, um, so we have uh, weekly volunteer meetings um, with our Waste Watchers group, which is a recycling um, and waste reduction group on campus. Um, and so one of our volunteers, Jed, heard about this idea of a repair cafe. Um, and so we decided to take the idea and make the repair fair, which is basically um, a place where anyone can bring broken items um, and have them fixed by volunteers. This month's theme was the focus on items such as bicycles, clothing, and electronics, to name a few. What do I look, well, I'm a bicycle wrench by trade, um, and I'm here tonight to help people with their bicycles. I, yeah, I've got many vested interests in the Student Sustainability Center itself. There's a lot of aspects of that, whether it be soil, gardening, uh, recycling, sorting out our bicycle infrastructure, or renewable energy. But tonight I'm here for the bike grease. For, one, for me, as somebody who's fixing stuff, I like the opportunity to uh, attack things as puzzles, sort of, um, see a bunch of devices I haven't seen before, figure out what's wrong with them. And um, in general, I, I really like that the uh, repair fair allows things that would become trash to become useful again. So. Waster Watchers will be organizing a repair fair once a month during the school year. So if you couldn't make it to this one, be sure to listen up for your next opportunity. And if you need something fixed, there are people there to help you out. This is Alexander Buck reporting for the Beaver News. Tonight we are joined by Jody DeVaz, Weight Watchers representative and repair fair volunteer. Thanks for joining us tonight, Jody. Thank you for having me. What is the repair fair? The repair fair is an opportunity for people in the OSU and Corvallis community to have their bicycles and appliances and clothing and other items fixed free of charge by volunteers here at OSU. And who coordinates this event? The event is coordinated by the Student Sustainability Initiative and the Campus Recycling Waste Watchers and they operate out of the Student Sustainability Center. And what can we do to get students involved with this movement? Well, if anyone is interested in becoming a repair volunteer, if they have skills in repair, then they can get in touch with us at recycling.oregonstate.edu. And our next repair fair is going to be held between the second to fourth week of November. So people are encouraged to bring their items at that point and they can get more information at recycling.oregonstate.edu. All right, thank you for joining us, Jody. Thank you for having me. This week, the Oregon State Ballroom Dance Club will be putting on a slightly different twist on ballroom dancing. The club, which hosts weekly Wednesday dance events, is planning what they call Pirates vs. Ninjas. The dance will take place tomorrow night in the MU Ballroom from 8 to 11, and dancers are encouraged, in the spirit of Halloween, to dress as either a pirate or a ninja. Before the dance, there will be a lesson in the Viennese Waltz at 7 p.m., 
Admission is $5 for students, 7 for community members, but dancing the waltz in a sea of pirates and ninjas will truly be priceless. Many, many students are aware that there are many options for lunch along Monroe Avenue, but have you ever thought about trying a student-owned restaurant? The Daily Barometer reports that Roxy Dogs, located at 1425 Northwest Monroe Avenue, changed management this past August and is now run by Curtis Fisher and Kurt Judling. A popular hot dog and sausage restaurant, Roxy Dogs was officially opened in early 2011 by original owners Connie and Mark Barnes, who named the hot dog joint after their beloved Golden Retriever. Since then, Junling and Fisher have taken over and have contributed continued to create a friendly experience for all that visit. They are particularly interested in gearing the business in the direction of the Oregon State community. Today, several students and community members are celebrating World Vegan Day, a day intended to bring attention to the vegan lifestyle. In order to gain attention of students in the quad, students and members of the vegan community were selling homemade vegan treats. These treats included cookies, brownies, and pastries for about a dollar apiece. We were able to talk with some of the representatives in the quad today. I am the president of the Vegans and Vegetarians Club, and um, basically we're trying to do some outreach. If you've never had vegan goods, um, this is a great way to try vegan stuff. So sweets appeal to pretty much everyone. World Vegan Day, um, it's about exposing people to veganism. Because veganism is kind of this um, subculture that people don't really understand or um, they are exposed to on a daily basis. Basically, um, you can replace everything in sweets with vegan things, and it tastes the same. So we use oil-based um, butters, and um, even margarines will have uh, milk solids in them, but the vegan versions don't. These are more savory. They're apple rosemary scones. So the various milks that you can use are almond milk, rice milk, soy milk is um, pretty standard. Oh, eggs. Eggs are a big one, um, and so we use flaxseed um, that takes the place where there are different powders that are out there commercially that people use. Tonight at Dixon Recreation Center, the Oregon State Rugby Intramural Registration started. If you didn't make it down there tonight, fear not. You have until Wednesday, November 7th at 6 p.m. Registration is with the Sports and Special Programs Office in Dixon. The Flag Rugby Tournament will be held Saturday, November 10th from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Student Legacy Park Fields. Before we end tonight's show, we're going to give you our Father's Weekend Weather Report. Friday will be much like today in that we'll see scattered showers with breaks of sunshine. Friday we'll see a high of 61 with a low of 48 degrees. On Saturday it looks like as the weather might clear up. We're not expecting clear skies but we may see more sun. But keep that rain jacket for those quick showers. Starting Sunday we're actually predicting a break in the clouds with partly sunny skies. On Sunday, we're expected to hit a high of 68 degrees and a low of 46. On Monday, the weather will be very similar with partly cloudy skies and scattered showers. And finally, Tuesday will yield a high of 63 degrees with a high chance of fog in the morning. Well, it looks like Sunday is going to be a warm one. That's all the news we have for you tonight. I'm Cody Stover. And I'm Joe Hedberg. Thank you for joining us tonight, and be sure to catch us Monday for the news you enjoy. Good night, everyone.